Hi there. Welcome to another After School Tech Tip. My name is Bernice and today we're going to be talking about Read and Write for Google Chrome and show you a few features for everyone. And if you're interested in more like this, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, check back for weekly videos and connect with your tips member for more information. Okay, so here we have our Read and Write for Google Chrome and what you'll see here is if I highlight some of the basic features is the ability to play, pause and stop. So if I go ahead and press play, it's going to start reading it. I can go ahead and press pause or alternatively, I can stop that. But there's other read and write features as well. One of them, for example, is the check it button. And so this check it button here on the left hand side with the check mark, you know, does a quick grammar check or will look for um, incorrectly spelled words or things like that. So let's say, for example, um, I'm going to go ahead and spell hidden wrong. I'm going to go ahead and click the check it. Um, and when I click, click check it, um, it's going to look through that document. Um, sometimes you do need to refresh it in order for that to work. And so when I've now refreshed that and gone ahead to go ahead and loaded the read and write bar and I click that button again, it's going to now highlight that and you can see that there's a purple line. If I go ahead and click that, I can now pick the word that it is supposed to be, and that's going to go ahead and fix that. Another one then is um, word prediction here. So word prediction now, I can go ahead and click on that button and it's going to start up so that I can continue to help with that word prediction piece. Another one um, that might be new is the um, option for dictionary and picture dictionary. So let's say I go ahead and highlight a word here. I'm going to go and press dictionary. There's my definition. And you can see it gives multiple definitions as well. So you can decide which one works best for you. I can also click picture dictionary. And again, notice that I have these pictures. Now, say you need a quick and easy image of a valley. Did you know that you can take these images and you can actually pull that over directly into your document? So if you ever need quick and easy pictures to pull in, um, that's a really great and easy way to get that, um, uh, get some pictures into your document. As well, um, another feature that you might not know about here is screenshot reader. Now this is more useful for images um, because what it does is it essentially looks at the image and then it decodes all the words that are in there in order to be able to again press play, pause, and then stop. So lots of different features there. Now, one really, really great feature in terms of accessibility is this screen masking button. And you'll notice that once I click it, um, essentially it's going to highlight specific areas and you can customize this and students can use this too to customize this to how they want it to be best. And what it really does is it eliminates distractions. Um, you can really focus in one area. And so if I click on the settings button here, I can go ahead and change the background to be a different color. Perhaps I can also go ahead and change it then to be a different color for the reading light. Um, and so completely up to you what you want that to look like. You can also change things like the um, reading light height. So there's a lot of other settings here and I'll just turn this into um, a little bit easier to see here. And so you can see here there's reading light height. Um, and so you can go ahead and change the height of that. You can also change how opaque the reading light is and you can also change the um, how opaque the background is as well. So again, I can go ahead and change that. And so you can really make it so that you can only see the portion that you're highlighting, really removing that, um, any distracting images or text or anything like that. And then to turn off the screen masking, you can go ahead and click that button and that's going to do that. While we're in the settings area, there is the ability to change um, the toolbar view. So if you don't like it horizontal, you can move it to vertical um, or you can move it to where it only pops up um, with writing as well. Another piece then is the talk and type. And so a lot of times with talk and type, you do need to make sure that it has access to your microphone, but I'm gonna go ahead and click talk and type. And what it's going to do 
is it's going to take everything I say and continue to put that into words. As I do that, you'll see that it is recording because you can see that this has a microphone that is in red. When I click on that then, it's going to stop. And one thing to notice is that you can change the language. There are lots of different languages that you can use. But something I wanna highlight as well is all of these different English within brackets. Um, like, so for example, English Australia. So this helps with accents that might come up um, and that then helps with the talk and type being more precise depending on the accent that is established there. Great. So that's the talk and type feature. As well then, there is the ability to translate. If you do have something in another language, you can click translate and that will help translate that to English. And there's also the ability to put um, highlights. So say you go ahead and um, highlight specific words here. So you can go ahead um, and when you finally highlighted all of these pieces, um, you can collect these highlights. So if I click collect highlights, you can choose and customize what you're collecting. But what it's going to do is going to pull all those highlights to another document. And basically, if you were collecting notes or highlighting anything, that would all go in there. Alternatively, since I highlighted specific words, you can also do that to create a vocabulary list. And when I go ahead and click OK, I'm going to go ahead and create a vocabulary list. And what it's going to do, it's going to take those specific words and it's actually going to pull the meaning that's come out from the dictionary as well as a symbol. And this is editable. So you can go ahead and pick the one that you want. So, you know, maybe none of these are the right one. Um, and this is the meaning that you want. So you can go ahead and edit that. Um, maybe that is the symbol that you want. And then you can go ahead and add the notes that you want in it um, as well. Another one um, to show you is the ability for voice notes. So students can leave voice notes, you can leave voice notes as well. But essentially, you can go ahead and click on that button. You can go ahead and record yourself, and that's going to be recorded into a note, 60 seconds maximum. When I press uh, stop and click comment, that's going to go ahead and comment right there and put that in. And notice how there is a... Um, play button, you can go ahead and click the play button and that's going to um, play that voice comment just out loud for you. You can of course resolve those comments and then those don't have to stay in there either. But again, a really great way for accessibility if you're looking to speak um, or the student wants to speak as well to um, add their comments. Now, finally, I wanna also talk about um, some of the features that exist in the web area as well. So a lot of the features I showed you exist in like docs and slides, um, but specifically with the website, there's a few other ones that I wanted to show you. Um, and the one here is Rewordify. So when you click on Rewordify, what it's going to do is take words in there and you see that it's become italicized. So you can go ahead and click on that and it's going to essentially give you another definition. So it like rewords um, it to be easier to understand and then of course I can go ahead and click back on that to get it to be um, a specific word uh, back to the word that it was the other one that I wanted to show you is the simplify page and so simplify page is again um, what it'll do is take all of the information on the page and you know depending on the page some work better than others so I'd really say to experiment with these but what you can do is when you simplify, you can make it less simple or you can make it more simple. Um, but there's also all of these other features where you can make it white on black text uh, or white, white text on black, um, you know, blue on yellow and all those different pieces. There's also different fonts that you can add in and you can also change the size of the font as well. So if that's something that makes it a little bit easier to read, that's something you can do. And you'll notice these different fonts. So say I want it in Comic Sans, or maybe I wanted an open dyslexic font, right? Um, all of these are different fonts that you can go ahead and use, um, again, to make it just easier to read in general. Last but not least here, then you can also see, um, you can change the line spacing to make it again, easier to read as well. And so you can pair this up with, you know, your, your 
um, screen masking. Um, so all those different features that I showed you earlier works as well. And that's it. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel, check back for weekly videos, and connect with your TIPS member. I hope that helps. Take care.